Welcome to Gray Matters, where John and I discuss stuff that matters to us and probably to you in a lot of cases. So here we go. You know, uh, we've had a whole bunch of discussions on genealogy, which yeah. it seems to be important to people in our, our uh, strata of life uh, in the over 50, over 60 groups. And um, uh, we, for instance, have, I forget the name of the service, but a, a family tree that keeps growing. Right. You have the right. new kids that are born and cousins and so Grand on and so kids. forth. Yeah. But we're yeah. finding distant cousins and every so often an uncle or an aunt uh, that we never knew about. And this is not any of the formal uh, uh, programs like Finding Your Roots or some of the more popular ones that are on TV now. I think Lisa Kudrow has one as well. Yeah. Uh, but John, you've actually been doing field trips. Uh, I did. Yeah. Well, we have a my mother's side of the family has a big family, twenty cousins uh, over twenty years, multi generational, and um, we all kind of got a little separated, I guess, <clears throat> as as families will do as people grow up, move around the country. So I've made it my business uh, in retirement to go visit cousins. And uh, it's been great. Last, I think it was October, late September, October, mm -hmm. I took a trip to New York. We talked about this on a couple of videos. Sure. You actually, you actually went to some far flung places uh, to meet yep. people in museums and stuff like that. So it was oh, really yeah. kind of cool. It was, it was a pretty extensive trip. Um, and I learned a lot. But one of the things I wanted to share today was that basically genealogy, we all have... Let me let me go back and, and say that that trip involved visiting cousins in Connecticut, somebody I'd never met in my life, mm. uh, New Jersey, people I had known but never met in person, uh, and uh, Port Jervis, New York. My cousin came down from Syracuse. So we and and then I went down to on a on a history trip down to Manasquan, New Jersey. So I really went around. Oh, and back to City Island, where mm. we have some family history. What I discovered, and I want to talk about today, is that my cousin in Connecticut and my cousins in northern New Jersey, well, it's middle New Jersey, uh, just south of uh, uh, Sandy Hook, they were both into what I'm into, which is this, as you called it, uh, online family tree service. Mm. I think there must be about a half a dozen of these. Mm. Um I'm probably signed up to two of them. I don't follow them very carefully, but they're all the same in a sense that they're all very useful. They're all really well thought out. You plug in a name, you can find somebody who might be related to you. Um, and you can share uh, my family tree, let's say with my cousin's family tree in New Jersey. So here's what I found out that I think today is interesting for everybody. And that is all three of us, <laughs> <laughs> have these family trees online and we never knew it. We, we haven't connected. We will be soon now, but we haven't connected to each other. And it's because we never talked to each other. We never picked up the phone. So my, my advice to everybody who's into genealogy is don't just rely on these wonderful online services. They're great repository and they're great um, archives, but, at some point, you got to pick up the phone or take a trip, as I do, and visit these relatives, these cousins, and try to find out more about them personally. Uh, they have stories about relatives that you mm. have in common that you may not have heard. Um, and it's, it's very common, I think, that you know your mother's side of the family might have dominated in the sense of that she had all the stories, family stories, and you know all about your mother's side of the family. And your father just didn't talk about his side of the family much. So you really don't know much about that. Well, that's what happened to my cousins in New Jersey. Hmm. Their father's side of the family was from New Orleans. So they would go down to New Orleans and have gumbo and reunions and whatever. Their mother's side of the family, which is where I'm coming from, they knew they were had cousins out there. They just nobody ever talked about it. Nobody ever got in touch. Isn't that odd? And yet mm. here they probably have twice as many cousins <laughs> on my side of the family as they do on their father's. Right. And so and actually some people, like you say, uh, if, if you're in touch with them only from time to time, yeah. part of the conversation would be, by the way, do you have a family tree as well? And if so, 
why don't we yeah. at least connect to where we're connected? I'll give you an example, uh, not of that so much, but my father's brother uh, was married to a, a woman who had a cousin, I don't think was super distant, Pinky Lee. So, you know, it's oh, like the six degrees the, of the separation. Yeah. Yeah. Six, and I love Pinky Lee. Uh, yeah. And I never met him. Uh, and uh, the families never got together on that side to to have a family reunion of some kind. But have you found uh, any uh, startling connections through some I, of these I other just, trees? I just got a, a fascinating story that I will never be able to verify. And that is that on my mother's side of the family, again, I just met with a cousin up in North in LA who, I, who was in on the East Coast, now has moved to the West Coast. So we got together for the first time in 10 years, I think. Um, he had a story. I'm named after my mother's older brother who died in high school. Mm. He was a great athlete. He was the apple of his father's eye. And uh, he used to, because he was an athlete, he would go to the New York AC, mm. the athletic club in Manhattan. And among other things, he was a boxer. Now, he, I think he was only 16 or 17 when he died. So he must have been 15, 14, 15. But my cousin told me that at the New York AC, he would be boxing with people um, like, oh, God, the writer's name just escapes me. The Old Man in the Sea. Who wrote that? Um, <laughs> anyway, famous writer. Not Hemingway. Uh, he would be boxing uh, with him. Uh, it must had to be a much older guy. Yeah. But what an interesting story. Whether it's true or not, I don't know, but it's a great story. Oh, great. So, I mean, there's likelihood that there are a whole bunch of these kinds of things around. And by the way, I can imagine that, in fact, a kid would go to, like, the uh, Athletic Club in New York and, and meet other people who, just like who you uh, talked about, and they would spar. They probably weren't having a knock down, drag out fight, but they were, right. they were sparring. And what a kick that must have been. Yeah. 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 Well, it, it's, I think it's the story, whether it's true or not, it's the story that, because it is very possible. It's a story that uh, is worth keeping and uh, noting. So uh, you, you don't get those stories from these online um, services. Mm. They're wonderful services, but you really have to get in touch with people. And it's also kind of a hobby for a lot of us. So cool. Uh, I recommend it. Okay. Well, let's go down. Let's uh, continue to search down memory lane. And from time to time, we'll uh, we'll tell you about uh, people in our past uh, that we, you know, the Benedict Arnold <laughs> <laughs> uh, that uh, we run across. Or, you know, I, what a thrill. I could be related to Taylor Swift. Wouldn't that be great? <laughs> uh, she, I'm a Swifty. She's invited to my house anytime. But even yeah. if we don't have such famous uh, uh, relatives, uh, and share with us if uh, if uh, you've started a family tree or you, uh, you've done deeply into your own, let us know, and maybe we can do an interview with you and share your story. For more on celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage. Follow us on Facebook. Subscribe to us on YouTube. And tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.